here is an example of a Paul Cezanne still life. And if you look at the object contained in the composition, you actually see very straightforward, simple, three-dimensional objects. Either cylinders, cones, circles, spheres, and cubes. And actually that is one of his fundamental beliefs, was that most objects could be reduced or simplified down to these three objects, a cube, a cylinder, or a cone. But actually, beyond these objects that he chose, even the way he arranged the compositions was based around what we would call geometry, simple shapes. The way he composed or arranged these objects emphasised, therefore, shapes and structure. And his still life arrangements look carefully arranged to allow him to explore this. For example, as you can see in the objects in front of you, there is a strong sense of structure or shape. For example, here. Or, apart from just the objects themselves, you can see these lines that are created all across the whole composition that break up the whole scene into very strong, dynamic shapes. You see triangles. Straight lines. Almost dividing the whole scene. Something very important to remember as his inspiration was all about structure and shape, not just in the objects he used, but even in the way he arranged his paintings. Even if you were to look at his landscapes or even his figure compositions, you'll see the same or similar structure applied. Here is another painting by Paul Cezanne and it's one you're gonna be looking at in closer detail and one you may even choose to use in your exam to analyze. It's called Still Life with Fruit Basket and it was painted in 1890 to 95. And apart from the traditional scene that you see in front of you, I want to concentrate particularly on Cezanne's composition and the way he's arranged the objects that you see in front of you. So yes, you can notice that there's fruit and traditional crockery and everyday items around you. And as you've read, it's clearly a snapshot composition because these objects appear or disappear out beyond the edges, like the chair here and the table there coming in here. And these objects obviously extend out of the page, so you don't see everything. But also when we look a bit closer at the composition, you can see that um, one of the facts we discussed earlier was the fact that this pear, for example, um, is almost the same size as that teapot. And this piece of fruit here is huge, and yet others seem very small. So there is a number of unusual factors going on here in terms of Cezanne's dist distortion of scale. But also in the way he's arranged the object, um, if you look carefully, you can actually see if you follow the lines we discussed earlier, for example, the line of this table. And you can see the edge of the table is like that there. You can see that edge. But then if you continue that across, as you would expect, it doesn't actually line up with where the table, the other side of the table should be. In fact, the other side of that table is here. Now this seems to be a mistake. But then also, if you look at this table leg, this chair leg, sorry, which appears in from the corner of the side of the composition, and then you, you look at the shadow 
that it casts on what should be the floor. The angle of the shadow makes it appear as if the floor is squint, and the shadow should actually be across and on a flat plane. So that's two rather unique and unusual parts of this composition that lead you to understand that Cezanne has actually distorted what you see. Also, another one, for interest's sake, you could see that this really large fruit basket, one of the central pieces to the composition, actually, if it's sitting on this table, it shouldn't actually be there, it, should, it would really be falling off. So that isn't also uh, true to form or true to life. And we call this distortion of perspective or distorted perspective. One final thing to note, if we have distortion or perspective in our minds, is that there is a perspective, i.e. where you view something from. And if I can, if I just remove these marks so you can see more clearly, if you look quite carefully at what we call the ellipses of objects, which is the circular part at the top of these jugs, for example, the ellipse there. But then you also you identify or look at the ellipse of the pot there, and also there. And also of the fruit basket. They're all at subtly different angles. Almost as if you're looking down on some of them, but then looking from a greater distance at others, from a lower position. And we call that multiple viewpoints. Distortion of perspective. Two very important points where Suzanne is actually using a distortion of scale, distortion of perspective, and multiple viewpoints to play with or emphasize this sense of structure and three dimensions. Thank you.